After a week at home, the Tigers head back on the road. The Tiger Lacrosse Report, presented by the Green Turtle, starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host Spiro Maricas, joined of course by the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Adlin. And coach, this week the Tigers take on Fairfield. The Stags losers to Delaware last week 15-7 to at your first conference road game of the year. And Towson and Fairfield has always been a game that has been tight, close, and many times very low scoring. Yeah, they, um, you know, they've had some really good goaltending and, and defenses in the past as well as us. And, um, you know, two stingy teams that I think do a good job preparing. You know, we like to think we do a good job preparing our guys. I know they do a good job uh, preparing their guys. And they always have a wrinkle or two that they like to throw at us. Um, you know, and they're, they're good poised, controlled team, and, and they can hurt you in spurts uh, offensively if, if you let them, um, but they can also buckle down and play pretty good defense, and they've usually been, you know, pretty strong at the face-off facts, which, you know, I feel like right now they're, they're doing a decent job there as well. They are also a team that's got a couple of overtime victories this year, so they're not, um, they're not, uh, how do I say, it? They, they, they get into a tight game, they're not going to get nervous because they've been there before and they've won it overtime. Yeah, their medal's definitely been tested a few times, and then they've come out on the positive end, and, uh, you know, I think that that helps a, a team understand how to play in those situations. You know, in, in tight games and pressure situations, and um, you know they're you know they're a team that's not going to get rattled. You know, with that, so we got to make sure that we understand that we got to play from start to finish as best we can, and then if we have an opportunity to to finish it out, that we do it the right way. Now, you look at their stats, and the first thing that jumps out to you is Dylan Beckwith. Not only does he have 22 goals, he's got 24 assists, 46 points in 10 games. I mean, that's putting up some points. Yeah, he's a fan, fantastic competitor, you know, watching him play, uh, especially the, um, I think it was the Utah game. Um, you know, he, he was just dynamic in that game, really helped his team be successful in a, in a pretty tight game as it was. Um, but he's just really competitive. You can see that he wants to to win, you know, he plays hard. He, he's really nifty as far as a, an athlete and a lacrosse player. Uh, he sets his teams up, teammates up for success. He's also obviously able to generate some stuff for himself. So he's a guy that does a lot for them and uh, really is, is the pulse of their offense. And then Taylor Strau, he's got 22 goals himself. Yeah, you know, they, like I said, they're not a, they're not bashful about putting balls on cage and then being able to fill the net. And um, they, yes, there's those those two guys, but they also can distribute it uh, to you know four or five other guys if they need to. 
every year, you know, the, the schedule is you either have three home games or two home games in conference play, and this year you only have two, which makes the win against Hofstra so much more important because you got to, you know, two only two home games, you got to protect your field. But now you go on the road for the first time against a Fairfield team that at 0-1, they know their backs are to the wall, so you're going to have a, a, an angry team coming out against you on Saturday. Yeah, being able to, to assess the Delaware um – game you know after seeing the final score then after seeing how the game went down i gotta imagine fairfield's gonna have a a really uh spirited week of practice you know they're gonna know that you know they obviously didn't play that well against delaware and um you know being that they're in conference play now you know the next one means that much more so i gotta imagine we'll see a a, a very uh energetic and uh tough team come saturday up there for your team last week, Brody McLean had three goals. Somebody who's kind of slacked, not slacked off, but hasn't been as productive lately, Brendan Sunday. Um, what do you need to do to get him back on track? Or is it just the teams are, are, are just keying on him and you've got to find other people? Brendan's a big part of our offense. Anybody that's seen us you know, realizes that. So he gains, he's getting a lot of attention. Um, I feel like maybe he's, he's putting still a little too much on himself, which... Um, it's good and bad, you know, as a leader, you, you like to see that, but you don't want it to, to kind of weigh him down and, and dis, distract from his game. And I think it has a little bit. I feel like he's overthinking it. He's not out there just kind of, uh, I feel like he's having fun, but he's not playing loose. He's not, you know, he's not letting the game come to him and just, you know, making smart decisions at all times. So, um, you know, he's, again, I think he's got to just kind of calm down a little bit, get out there, play. The guys around him, have to help him a little bit more, and I feel like they they did that, you know, against Hofstra with um, Brody doing well, Grant doing well, so it takes some pressure off of Brendan as well. All right, so the Tigers will take on Fairfield on Saturday at 1 o'clock. I'll have the call for you starting at 12.45 with the pregame show on TowsonTigers.com. Now, last week we found out Coach Nadlin likes steak. This week, I know that Coach Nadlin is a big Pearl Jam fan. What is your favorite Pearl Jam album? Ten. Ten? Ten. Absolutely. First album. It's terrific. They haven't gotten better since that first one. Yeah, they got obviously a lot of live albums out there too, so those are always good ones. All right, so for the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, go Tigers. <laughs>